All right. Good evening or good morning from wherever you guys are. <laughs> uh, Welcome we, back, everyone. I know it's we strange. Have, we're it's doing not this, Saturday morning. <laughs> we're doing this totally out of uh, turn. And uh, I think Europe is asleep right now. Yeah, most of them. Yeah, but uh, hey, you know, it's an important thing because there was just a big announcement on the Nikon D850. And that is why we are here doing the show Exactly. Yeah, you might be wondering who's that guy. Uh, so let's start with that. First clue, his shirt says Nikon. Everybody, this is Russ Vanderleer. From Hi, Canada. everybody. Uh, sorry, from Canada. Nikon Canada. <laughs> Not yes, Canon. From yes, Canada. Yes, definitely from Nikon Canada. And we have a D850 here. So we were really excited about this, of course. There's been a lot of people talking about the specs and everything like that for the longest time. But we have the actual camera. So we're not going to spend too much time giving you guys a spec rundown because I'm sure you've spent the last half hour obsessing exactly. over it, furiously getting on message boards, throwing your opinions out there. We're going to tell you what it feels like, what it handles like. Sure. And we're also going to have Russ here to answer any questions you've got. That's the beautiful thing about live. There might be some stuff that we missed, so let us know if we're not touching sure. on something. I mean, this is a great opportunity for you to ask what questions you have. Um, we've got the camera here. We've got an actual camera angle right on the camera. So, you know, we're going to showcase this beautiful thing, and it really is quite a beautiful camera. Mm. And, you know, I think the reason why we're doing this, you know, the SLR world, I think Jordan and I have made it very clear over the last, well, quite a few shows that... We yeah. feel like SLRs are not giving us anything exciting. Uh, it's been a kind you know, of a stagnant year disagree. for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you disagree. Uh, you know, Nikon's been okay, but you're, you're culprits too. Canon for sure. And, you know, Pentax, like, you know, it's hard to find SLRs that really excite us. And so here we have a camera yeah. that we've actually touched, we've actually looked at, and we're actually really excited about it. So what I find really interesting is kind of the mentality behind this camera. Because it really feels to me like they said, okay, let's just throw the best of everything that we've got at it. Where we see so much segmentation yeah, on so this many is, cameras This now. is the Jurassic Park of cameras, right? Yeah. Like, no, no expense spared. You just, you know, and it'll probably end up with a lot of people dead. But it is just like, <laughs> do it, throw everything you can at the camera. Exactly. And that's really exciting. I mean, this is... We, we talk so much about market segmentation. We talk so much about cameras being handicapped or, you know, you held out this feature because you don't want to compete with this camera. You held out this feature to, to segment in some sort of tier. And it's like, you guys didn't do that here, eh? This is the most well-rounded DSLR we've ever made. It just, we didn't hold back. Everything you'd want is in this camera. It's it's incredible. Well, the thing that really kind of surprised me coming from the 810, which was really like a, you know, hold nothing back um, in terms of image quality, but it was still a deliberate camera. And mm -hmm. we're seeing, yeah, some slower cameras in this class. It's always been sure. that, you know, like middle, like like the high-end professional camera before going to the sports cameras, basically. Well, yeah. I mean, You've you talk, always sacrificed speed. You talk about the D810, right? Yeah. The D810 is an amazing camera, except not anymore, because there's D850. And uh, it's no, no. still amazing. <laughs> it is it's not as amazing. <laughs> but you know, the D810 was, you know, I, I think everybody could agree the D810 was aimed at a specialized market, right? It was like, you know, we're giving you a good camera. It focuses quick, it's rugged, but this is a big imager, high yeah. megapixels, right? Uh, whereas this camera, I, what can't it do? Yeah, like I love having the option of up to nine frames per second if you need it, yeah. uh, with the battery grip is really cool, uh, as opposed to just locking it at seven, because that's what the body could do without the extra grip on it. Mm -hmm. And having the D5 autofocus system, which, you know, there's some focus systems that do great jobs if you're doing segmented points or something, but the 3D tracking, if you want to just put a dot on something and let the camera track it forever, is, is, great is the best, yeah. I I'd say straight up, even Absolutely. compared to some of the new, like the Sony A9 system, great with segmented metering. 3D tracking, though, is just such a great I mean, consistent system. The A9 system. does a very good job as well, but certainly, you know, Nikon's taken, I guess, really a culmination of all their technology and thrown it in here, Harris. Mm -hmm. This is our 100 year camera, right? So <laughs> this has 100 years of expertise behind it. So. It only took 100 years to build this camera. Hey, it takes time to develop this technology and make it perfect, right? Perfection is This looks art, nothing like right? those prototypes from 1917 for this nothing camera. Before. You I'm said Jurassic Park, this I'm, is evolution. I'm, no, man. I'm not allowed to touch it because I know we got the camera angle on here, but uh, you know, one thing that you certainly notice right off the bat uh, very different look to it. You know, the prism has been shaped. I like that. It's a nice change. I think that's important. Like anything here right now, we're talking about SLRs and how they need to be exciting. And so even minor things like a small change to the look of the camera, I think becomes quite a big deal. 
Well, the other thing worth pointing out, too, that I don't think is getting as much press as it should is this is, I mean, why I love optical viewfinders is you've got a big view of the world. Yeah. And this is the best one I've seen from Nikon. So I don't think I've seen a, an optical viewfinder this good since like the A900 10 years ago. Yeah. And so, Russ, they've done something different here. Hey, I mean, what's kind of unique about this viewfinder? Well, this is a 0.75 uh, magnification viewfinder. So this is actually the widest angle viewfinder we've ever had in a DSLR. So, I mean, just it's, it's, it's going to be bright. You're going to have this huge field of view. If you're a pro shooter, you're going to love this. It's just going to be a dream mm. to work with. Now, obviously, people at home, I know you can't touch the camera. You can't see through the viewfinders. So, well, neither can you, apparently. But, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't either. But you all trust us explicitly. So if you have any questions about how it feels... Uh, or how it looks, yeah, I mean, so well, far. Well, here, I've got a great idea. How about if we don't cut to that camera angle for a little bit, and I'll tell you right now, I love that they're keeping that deep middle yep. finger that they started with mm. the 750. It's the opposite of a middle finger to their consumers. <laughs> uh, but just a very deep grip. No, that was good. I will not, not no. Good. Good. <laughs> this is live, baby. Yep. Um, but I do love this grip that You've was on the 750. You've only had half a beer. Right? I know. Oh, and starting already. Uh, what are your thoughts on the handling, Chris? Well, I mean, again, I, the camera feels good. I do shoot Nikon SLRs, uh, or, or did. <laughs> I do, yeah, did. But, you know, I mean, yes, it feels very good. Nice, deep grip. Uh, very comfortable. I do like the viewfinder. Everything feels comfortable. Again, we're not going to gush all over this camera. I mean, again, we're here to talk about this camera. Um, we really appreciate you being here, letting us play with this. But we are still going to have an honest it. opinion about it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, not everything's perfect, but the handling, pretty darn perfect. It is. And yeah. I love that they kept the tilty screen on it. I was really worried that they'd be like, nah, that's a 750 thing. But it's that really rugged, <laughs> beautiful tilty screen They're from tough the D500. I do this wow. all the time. And it's, oh, it's wow. insanely sharp, too. Or just earlier okay. when I was looking at some of the video functionality on this, I was finding I didn't need to magnify to check my focus a lot of the time. It's so, very, very sharp. Let's bam. see how well you can okay. put that down in the same focal point. I think point. I did now, it. Uh, what, I'm, what we're getting inundated with, of course, is questions. Yes, so, yes we're, and that's, you know, primarily... That's why we're here. We're not here to run down specs. We're okay. here to answer your questions. That's the whole point of doing so this. So one of those 46 burning, megapixels. burning questions <laughs> is, is that sensor manufactured by Nikon or quote-unquote other party? Yeah, I'm sure it is designed by Nikon. Hey, there you go. There you go. That's, let's that's let's, re answer. let's reword that question. Wink, wink, Does nudge, nudge. Does it have nudge. the word Nikon silk screened on the chip, Russ? I don't know. I haven't seen the chip. <laughs> there you go. We Probably don't know does. just as much as you do, Internet. <laughs> well, here's uh, the thing. No, we're not going to have a lot of answers for you today. I mean, obviously, this is, we should mention, this is an early pre-production kind of uh, Yeah, we model, can't right? we can't shoot on it. Some features aren't fully functional can we yet. We asked, we're like, can we plug HDMI cables into this Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. You know, can we throw, but, you know, we're, we really appreciate having this early uh, here for you guys. Uh, one thing I will say, um, I should say to 45.7 megapixels, that's the official number. Yeah, that's we're going to say 46 because we're optimistic, but yeah. I'm Guys, gonna cut to this one, one thing fast. I will say really quickly is I pretty. love the emphasis on low ISOs that Nikon's using before with the 810, and that's carried over with this. Right. So there have been some cameras coming out where they've sacrificed some of the low ISO performance to push the high ISOs a little right. further. I've seen a few cameras <laughs> like that. <laughs> this doesn't seem to be the case with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, you had mentioned uh, whether you would punch in or what have you. Uh, another question being presented is, uh, will focus peaking work with 4K? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure yet. It, it is actually only compatible with 1080. I know that. For oh. Yeah. oh, there you go. Well, it's a good thing that screen is so sharp then. Yes. If it's any <laughs> constellation, it comes in what? White, red, yellow, possibly blue and slash blue. green. Yep. Yeah, we're going with blue? We're going with blue. Okay. Okay. We saw blue. But Looks there's no nice. green. Okay. I'm sorry. So uh, no is green. there a Nikon yellow? Huge minus, no green. So, I mean, that does mean if you really rely on focus peaking, and uh, especially punch in during recording, you might want to use an external recorder with this. Yeah. Uh, it's something to keep in mind for sure. But that new uh, Ninja Inferno is beautiful. And yeah. You know, and I mean, I suppose a lot of people doing a 4K workflow are going to go to an external monitor. Mm -hmm. We should mention that is actually a nice plus. This camera is outputting full 4K UHD. Is that right? It's full, K, full 4K UHD, but it's full feed from the sensor. There is no crop factor on this at all in 4K. Yeah. And that's huge. And you can also do a DX crop 
for 4K, so you can get double duty out of, out of your lenses in terms of focal yeah, length in, in 4K recording. Make use okay. of that DX glass, no. maybe a speed boost. Yeah. Now so, we don't know exactly. I should point out we don't know exactly how it's doing that. Uh, what type of system that it's using? Mm. But um, I am very curious what's going to give us the higher image quality, yeah. the Super 35 or the full frame. Is it it's going to be, be a like lot of some fun of the to Sony's test. where it's sharp in one mode and, and soft in another? We don't know. We but don't it's know. it's really important because this guy, camera's chief competitor is the 5D Mark IV, which has an embarrassing crop in 4K recording. <laughs> okay. So, and are, a largely unusable uh, compression ratio. Are, yes. are we outputting at 30 and 60 frames a second at 4K? Hey, there you Whoa, go. Oh, easy. That's I'll take this one because wow. he's going to break his beard. Uh, <laughs> that made him very upset. It's, it's you 20, upset Jordan. It's 24, 30 and 4K. Yeah, you, don't have, you don't have 60 frames. No 60. Don't and here's that. the great thing. We go out to the rest of the world, so all you pallers, you also get your 25 frames. Yes, you do. But no 50, I'm afraid. Yes, you do. Yeah, uh, I mean, one other thing, really cool, not to keep cutting you off, but we're talking about video here, Chris, and I have thoughts and opinions. I was just going to say something about video. Jordan okay. is very excited we do to try this camera out. Uh, we do have 120 frames per second in uh, North American regions and 100 frames per second at 1080. Yeah. Um, looks very sharp. Again, yes. I haven't been able to throw a card in, but that's a damn good screen, and I didn't see a lot of aliasing. Again, we'll review these things more down the road. I will point out there is a bit of a crop when you jump into 120 recording. It looks like it'll yeah. just use the just DX mode crop. for that. Yeah, DX mode for that so far. Russ, is the, is the focus still going to be dog... Thought. Well, uh, speaking of, <laughs> how's, in video how's, mode? how's the low light performance in eye tracking? Well, we can't test those yet. Hey, yeah. there you go. Those are things that we can't talk about. Okay, Surprise, you know, internet. You know, just to get out there, this is a 153-point AF system, yep. basically barred from the D5, D500. It's, it's the exact same AF module as the, yep. as the D5, D500. So minus low, three across yeah, all minus the points. Three, minus yep. four in the middle. It's got its own AF processor. Uh, it's f8 in the middle, 15 points. So if you're using a, a f4 lens with a two times converter, you'll still have no autofocus. Yeah. It's the exact same module. It's a yeah. very capable AF. I mean, <laughs> someone's wondering. I expect the autofocus is still going to be an issue in video. I mean, I'm going to go with that. Again, we can't confirm I, it. We, we haven't heard anything about updating on the live view focus. Yeah. So I would still consider if you're doing movie mode. Um, and, you know, more action-oriented photography with a live view display. I think it's going to be a manual focus situation. Still, yes. Uh, yeah, that is, I would say, definitely going to be the case. And those Nikon lenses focus. The Which is why Canon's probably on their hands, and he's like, thank God. <laughs> this is all we have. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, of course, we're getting asked the uh, burning questions like, is there st sensor stabilization? Oh, no. no. Oh, nope. Okay. No, nope. Uh, it's a, we, we are it's an SLR. It's an SLR. There's no modern technology. Well, that's what we no. have. All right. Yeah, none right. of the sensor shift stuff from the Pentax SLRs. Yeah, lots of questions. Listen, lots of questions. Uh, so uh, we're also wondering, um, what it, what's the, or what's the deal with the AK time lapse? Yeah, AK time lapse. Uh, we might as well talk about it. Okay, uh, so this is one of the first cameras that hits the spec for 8K because it's 42 and a half megapixels is what 8K video is technically. Right. And this camera is more than that, so that's awesome. I still think it's like <laughs> I don't think it's that high. I think it's like 33 megapixels. That's not correct. Okay. I I believe it is. <laughs> mm. But yeah. uh, well, either we way, didn't have it in the D800, D810, and there that you was go. 36. So we might have to throw this one. Yeah. Through. See, I think I'm right in this particular case, and Jordan's wrong. We okay. talked about oh, this earlier. Oh, oh. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we got to make a point of this. I'm right. right. Jordan's wrong. Uh, it, but you know, it's still a lot of megapixels. But at the same time, and this is one. I'm, I'm not going to call it a negative, but you know, it is marketing, right? You guys, like, hey, AK time lapse. Every camera does time lapse. Uh, you know, high megapixel cameras can do a very similar thing, and uh, it doesn't build the time lapse in the camera. <laughs> it, well, does, it doesn't build the it, 8K time lapse in does, the 8K yeah. time lapse. It does camera. Yeah. So you are still using third-party software, but yes, you know, intervalometer basically is what mm -hmm. it's doing. But there are some neat, neat features. Mm -hmm. I did like things like the exposure smoothing. Yes. That looks very interesting. And, and the new uh, silent live view mode, right? So. And we are going to talk about it quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. How many people have burned out their shutters because they're like, I decided I would try doing time lapse, Absolutely. and then they're like, Wow, two hundred fifty thousand shutters is not a lot of shutters <laughs> yeah. no, for yeah, when you're shooting. You do a lot of time lapse. <laughs> yeah. 
All but right. Yeah, it's it's got a built-in thing, um, third party for 8K, but still, it's a nice feature. It's high megapixel count. Yeah, I would have loved to see them build files. it in camera, but I still think this is going to be the gold standard for time-lapse cameras, yeah, especially but. with that electronic shutter mode, though we still don't know what the image quality is going to yeah, be like. I think we're in a 4K yeah. world. Let's just stick to a 4K world and make that our idea right now. Enough K is people. Started, don't get Jordan started on more than 4 k <laughs> There's going to be a video in the fall about that. Yeah, Jordan can only mm -hmm. tolerate so many Ks. How many Ks room. are too many Ks? Four. There's too many Ks out four there Four is the days. maximum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four is company. It's a new sitcom that we're going to make. Uh, uh, okay. Uh-oh. Oh, you know what else we should mention? Because uh, this we're is sounding about the other internet people. Uh, um, this is this is sounding pretty good, and uh, you can pre-order that actually through the camera store. The link is now live, so uh, if you want to kick over to go. that, we do hey. have the uh, URL there. Um, oh, it's just thecamerastore.com. That's easy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and confirmed price forty two ninety nine. What? Yeah. There you go. That's actually somewhat less than I thought yeah. it was going to be. I, it's so, a great deal. I, it's I, oh, yeah, it's, 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 how it's less it than is. I thought it was going to be. Chris, get yeah. out of the shot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, speaking of, um, what about the backside illuminated <laughs> sensor? And what is it doing for Moiré and stuff like that? So, I don't think Moiré is going to be an issue. I, no? I don't think so. I mean, so there's a couple things going on. It, it is a backside illuminated CMOS sensor, which is really what gonna, is what's going to give this camera a phenomenal low light capability and, and significant dynamic range. I think this will probably be as good mm -hmm. as the D810. And there is no optical low pass anti-aliasing filter in Fantastic. this. Fantastic. So you're going to get a really sharp image. Um, you know, when you remove that, uh, you open up the potential for Moray. But in our experience, you know, based on the D800. Especially with the high resolution e, now. Yeah, I and don't think yeah with the higher res, I really don't think that anti-aliasing, or sorry, Moray is really going to be a big issue. I, it, you know, they're always laughing back there, yeah. and what you got to use. Like, they like people are saying funny comments, all, probably about our mothers. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, the sensor is interesting. Dynamic range, of course. Again, we can't test it, but you did say it's going to be at least as good as. It, yeah, I mean, it's one of the things we haven't seen it. It's brand new. Haven't shot it yet myself. Um, but it, it, you know, everything I'm hearing is, is at least as good as the D810, right. which was uh, and so that's a 36 megapixel camera, right? So we're internet confirmed. By Nikon Canada, Russell Vandelier, uh, 42 stops at dynamic range. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, 42 <laughs> stops. 42, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. The stop for but nearly every pixel. 45.7 stops at dynamic range and megapixels. Yes, exactly. No, not quite. But uh, yeah, I mean, I do like. I have to be honest with you, this whole like low light kick and, <laughs> and messing around with high ISO performance at the expense of dynamic range, I think this is a better move. People want DR. Well, and what we saw before, because uh, really the A7R2 is our first example of like a very current backside illuminated sensor. Right. High and megapixel, we saw good DR. spectacular dynamic range, but no yeah. compromises at the high. Actually, it was quite a bit better than a lot of competing high ISO cameras. So mm -hmm. again, I'm optimistic. I'm really looking forward to testing this. How and we should you... mention here too, we're going to do a full very yeah, comprehensive absolutely. field test of this camera. Right now, we're just excited. So how do you feel about the 64 ISO native bottom? Jordan. I love it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I like it too. Russ's answer is going to be, it's the best. It's yeah. amazing. It's great. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so that is fairly unique, though, in the SLR world, right? Having a native ISO 64, uh, yes. you know. Just gives you a bigger bucket to collect light mm -hmm. and less ND filters you got to drag around, too. It's all positive. There you go. So uh, we're getting asked, is there a fully integrated touchscreen? Yes. 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 Yeah. Fully uh, integrated yes. touchscreen, uh, touchscreen menu navigation, touchscreen uh, focus point selection and live view. You can pinch and pull and. So I love this. The menu. Yeah. Totally has visible. been enabled let's, for menu, which is fantastic. Let's see touchscreen if we can, works uh, for autofocusing point as well. Um, yeah, swiping for playback, all that kind of stuff. So this is nice. Yeah. Uh, will it work during live zoom? view? Yeah. It will work during live view. You yeah. can set your focus point with it in live view. Absolutely. Wow. And here's the thing. We talked about this earlier, and it still upsets me, though, Russ. I'm too busy uh, poking hey, to listen hey, to you. Jordan, hold that up to your chest and make that shutter go off. No. Oh, people oh. want to hear it? Yeah, people want to hear, hear, yeah, people want to hear how pretty it is. Here we go. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, it's on high speed. Oh, yeah. man, that sounded Honestly, wonderful. it sounds like it sounds like a typical Nikon uh, shutter. We're not seeing anything different or hearing anything different, but it, it seems sounded stable. better and It newer. feels quite you stable. shut up. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, back to the... Uh, I see, okay, we were talking about this earlier. Um, autofocus, uh, touch screen capability, moving your autofocus and points around while having your eye up to the viewfinder. 
I'm going to grill you on this, Russ. So Why so does the D5600... Okay, I'm so, still upset yeah, about this. So you're talking about the custom touch function that we have in the D5600. And, 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 and it's and awesome. The and it is awesome. Why does and, the D5600 let you bring the camera up to your eye and still use your thumb for the touch screen? And then Icon's like, that's the best idea ever. Let's never awesome. put it in it's any unfortunately other... unfortunately not in the D850. <laughs> we'll put it in the suggestion box, okay? <laughs> Just lock eyes with the camera. Duh. We suggest this feature. It's such a good idea. I don't understand. Yep. I, I will say, though, my favorite of the focus point nipple selectors uh, is actually the one that Nikon's <laughs> using on these cameras. It's very good, Jordan but yeah, I'd love nipples. to have the touch screen thing. It's, everyone calls it the nipple. That's the nipple. All right. Fair I've enough. never heard it called the nipple. <laughs> I've never heard it called nipple either, yeah. All right. Jordan's going to fix his nipples. He's done three quarters of beer, and he goes right to nipples. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry, sorry, internet. It's a family uh, channel. <laughs> Not at night. Uh, <laughs> we are drinking beer. Yeah. Uh, Nikon Rumors is saying hello. Hi, Hi Nikon Rumors. Nikon hello. Rumors. There you go. And yeah, we should say thank you very much. They are helping us out here. Um, there you go. Yeah, I believe they've this, embedded this video. This I can't see. I'm not on the. Yeah. But oh, yes, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate all you do. How bright is our viewfinder on this thing? Is it a bright viewfinder? <laughs> it's nice. I mean, I it's know it's, nice. hard, to, yeah. it's hard to equate yeah. through through the thing. But yeah, In I mean, you're getting an room. excellent viewfinder. Magnification is, is 0.75, 0 .75. but you know, it doesn't feel like you're looking down a tunnel. We've got really, really nice, uh, large viewfinder. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I found it quite bright. It's one. I it's, know it's subjective, but it's nice. It's I mean, a, it's equally as good. It's the best viewfinder you guys have made, really. Yeah. Uh, are we still keeping the NEL 15? We are keeping yeah. the hey. NEL 15, yes. And then, of course, you can use, you can also use the, uh, the brand new MED uh, 18 grip, and yep. then you can use the ENEL 18 uh, battery the with that. The big sucker. Yes. Yeah. So, and the battery life is amazing. You're going to get about uh, 1,840 shots SEPA rating off that ENEL 15. And then if you put that ENEL 18 in the grip, you're going to get about 5,100 shots of charge. It's amazing. Yes. I wasn't expecting that with the uh, bump in the screen resolution and size from the 810. So, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. Same battery. Like, almost 50% battery battery and, life. And, it's and that impressive. grip, of course, bumps your drive speed to nine frames a second from seven. So it's, you know, you get amazing mm -hmm. battery life. You get the extra control yeah. set. So pre-order that too now. There, there you go. <laughs> I would take a um, grip for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. So from, I guess, personal standpoint, because we can't really show anything, how do you guys feel about the higher ISO performance? We have no idea. Yeah, yeah again, that's that's a tricky one. Let's shoot one. it 20, right now. Twenty five thousand six hundred is sort of the it, top un, you know un digital push kind of uh, ISO, but um, which I'm fine with because the what was it million ISO on the five hundred? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one point six million uh, high five on the D five hundred. Three point two million uh, high five on the uh, D five. That, that looked great on the <laughs> box, but <laughs> yeah. And what's what's the high push on this one? Uh, it goes to high two. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. that's lots of highs. That's we more did, than high enough. We complained a lot about <laughs> that on the D500, and so I guess maybe Nikon's listening. We like to think that. Let's Go keep it in. I mean, you can guys, all, Google how high is. You can high always too. underexpose. Either that or this camera might have the worst. Uh, this camera might have the worst live performance of all time. We have no idea, but I doubt it. I'm but skeptical. Yes, we still um, gotta wait to see that. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> no, no, guys, Jordan is cool. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I'd love to know the context of that. Uh, frames per second in DX crop mode. Uh, unchanged, oh. I believe. It's unchanged, unchanged in DX yeah. crop mode. So it's, it's, it's seven frames per second, and, that, and that's full resolution. Oh. Uh, and then you can go to nine with the grip. And then you also have the new silent shooting mode, which you go to the, Pretty cool. the, the DX uh, 8.5 megapixel uh, crop, but that's 30 frames a second. So. Yeah, you could basically look at that as like a 4K uh, frame grab. DX crop frame grab, 30 frames per second. But yeah, I mean, sure, it's nice. But it's have. saving them in camera with all your metadata, which yeah. is actually really useful a, really nice a lot bonus. of the times. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will say as well, um, I love that this shoots raw, of course, but we do also have some smaller raw sizes. And I was just going to say and that, you know, you mean. Uh, we're on the same page. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. you're, you're not part of this, uh, Ross. So let us keep working. I, I think uh, left uh, I think medium no. raw was like 25 megapixels. Uh, yeah, 25, which is perfect. Yeah, 25.6 yeah. is perfect. Yeah, yeah 11, so 11 for small. Perfect. Yeah. There are other high res cameras out there that are lacking this mode. And if you want to go shoot a wedding or something like that, you oh, might yeah. not always want to deal with massive files. Yeah. That like 25 is the perfect number yeah. for that. And and bouncing back to the dry speed thing for a second too, the buffer is also big. Uh, you can shoot 51 shots 14-bit lossless compressed before you fill the buffer so. there you go. 
Very, very nice. So yeah. um, yeah, someone's asking, does it outperform the DA10 for landscape? The answer is yes. Yeah. Your See, I, would expect and so. and I would expect so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Unless you put it on Instagram, the then there's no difference whatsoever. No, <laughs> but yeah. if if you decide to print, it, it if you're one to one prop mode, uh, though. Okay, Jordan, if you're only printing do... 24 by 36, they'll be similar. But Jordan, after that, <laughs> Jordan, can we do another one of your shirt tests and sure. uh, do the silent shutter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the Guess what? It's gonna be silent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna let you set that up. That silent mode is pretty cool on this. So this has brand new electronic shutter, um, which is unique, absolutely, for Nikon, yeah. right? So shutter speed capable, do you remember us? Sorry, it's what's the question? Shutter speeds, electronic shutter, what's uh, our range? Uh, you know what, I actually don't know that's okay. off the top of my head. You well, know, is dynamic range gonna suffer? Possibly, again, these are things we wanna play with, but it does have silent shooting capability. This is a new thing. Is the rolling shutter gonna be ungodly? We don't yet. Um, I mean, 46 megapixels on a full frame sensor is a lot of room to it scan. It is a lot of room to I'm scan. I'm really looking forward to yes. testing that, but I can still see, especially like going back to the time lapse or something. Here, yeah. put it up against go. your chest. And We've got no X speed. X gonna make no noise. X he's taking photos. Just take taking photos. Yeah. There's no noise. Uh, X speed 5 processor. It's got the new X speed 5 processor. So yeah. hopefully that'll help with that I kind of stuff. I took pictures. Yeah. He took a whole bunch of pictures. Yeah. yeah it was. Frame wow. rate on that is. Five frames per second, is that correct? Okay, so if you're shooting uh, in the full 46 megapixel resolution, that's six frames a mm. second, and you have autofocus and auto exposure lock. Okay. And then you can actually go to 30 frames per second at that 8.5 Without megapixel. focus and exposure right yeah. so, so it'll be in that DX 8.5. Sweet. This viewfinder is beautiful. Awesome. So we, we put it down. You'll go blind. <laughs> uh, so since since we it. live in the future, I'm sure uh, people would probably ask, uh, what are the Wi-Fi capabilities? And uh, subsequently, the, future, the, the doodad, uh, the WD dash seven A. WT seven A. WT seven A. Yeah. WT. I think it is. Is it WT? Yeah. It is a WT seven A. So the camera has Nikon SnapBridge built into it. So you all have uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Built right in. Right your phone, for, as usual. Yeah, so yeah. two megapixel quick transfer for social media yeah, to your... You can Twitter. do full 46 yeah. megapixel transfers through Wi-Fi. If you have the Wi-Fi enabled, yeah. yeah. And then you do have the, the WT7A as an optional add-on. If you want that, that you much... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want that much higher degree of control, right? So if that's full wireless or Ethernet tether, full camera control, that's not maybe an every person's sort of wireless solution. Maybe but if you need, price on that? Uh, you know what? Uh, we do. I don't have it offhand. If so you give me a second, I will look it up. The, okay. the WT. Oh, <laughs> uh, Cheers, baby. <laughs> There you go. Uh, the WT, uh, is that going to be enabled? Russ is not drinking. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Russ is not drinking you're, because he is partially welcome. hot or right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. That's a complete lie. <laughs> uh, will, will it be utilized uh, efficiently for tethering? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. This is not This is a new device, but this isn't really new technology. We've yeah. had these WT series wireless transmitters for sure. a while. Yeah. And efficient. while we're talking yeah, about transmitters, of course, this camera is going to feature or support the whole new wireless flash system. Right, all the, um, all the radio options. Yeah. No pop-up flash on it, no. so you don't have that optical option. You've got to get the little transmitters. You've got to get the little dongly doodly. Yeah. But you can do it. It works. You got to get that little nipple you stick on the doodly. You and your nipple. I just saw Russ cringe. Like, it was just, oh, they're saying dongly doodly. You and your nipple. I am so in trouble. I'm sorry, folks. Let's see. Make sure you grab a dongly doodly. Make sure you grab your dongly doodly. But make sure you ask Jordan that question because everybody else is going to look at you and think you're a second. Media type. Media type. So, actually, very cool. SD and XQD. Whoa. Uh, the SD is a UHS-2 slot. Take that um, compact flash. Yeah, so, you know, that's great to see. And I love the XQD format. XQD I, is my favorite Nikon media format. Nikon the only uh, big manufacturer that's really supporting that. Even Sony doesn't really put Which it Which is baffling to yeah. me. Um, um, I love there's no exposed contacts in it. There's no yeah. pins to be broken. So um, it works well. I haven't. Well, we should do an XQD durability, like a format I durability it's test. Time for it's us time to again. Do a durability awesome. test for memory cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So please, memory card manufacturers, send us memory cards that we can destroy because <laughs> our boss will not fit the bill for that. Um, hardlining uh, the camera for tethering. USB 3 or 3.1? Or I guess USB C. You know what? That is not a spec I have at hand, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Is it yeah. USB C on the side? Do it. Do it's USB it. 3. What? Okay, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take USB that, 3. Internet. Uh, Mic jack, headphone jack, I mean, it's pretty typical, but. Uh, the D850 does actually have a new attenuator for sound, and that's Correct. something we really yep. want to try because, again, 
cameras, uh, SLRs, I should say, not cameras, uh, mm. SLRs tend to be quite crap. The bar for preamps on DSLRs very is low. that high, yeah. so I hope that's in frame that high. Yeah, that's uh, so uh, if this can have a preamp that's that high, that would be a huge step in the right direction. Again, this is something I can't wait to test, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to shoot an entire episode on the 850. I think that's going to be a really fun challenge. Hey, Russ, on, on HDMI, I know this is a tricky question, but do you think the D850 is going to come with all the cable supports? <laughs> For tethering, so it doesn't rip out of your body. Like you know, what I, I think it will. Just we've yeah. done we've done that in the past, but to be honest with you, I actually haven't seen the box. No, fair enough. Yet, so. Fair enough. But we could hopefully expect that. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So I just want to keep uh, holding it. No, we have it, and it's a hands-on. No internet. One of each card is not insane. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a huge fan of this. One for RAW, one for JPEG. Sure. Or, and it, they're both fast enough to hey. keep up with video with or backup. Or a backup. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. SD, it's UHS-2 now. UHS-2 cards are fairly affordable. Do we, so. do we have and a, fast. Do we have a pop-up flash on that? No. There, there's no, no poppy up. No pop-up pop flashy babies. Um, Nothing's but it does there. support the new radio flash system, right? Sweet. So. Yeah. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, this camera is weatherproof, it's rugged, magnesium body, and it's also fingernail proof. Uh, illuminated controls now, too. <gasps> oh, yeah. Right. Hey, hang on. Can, you, can we kill that? Can we kill it? Yeah, can okay. we kill that light? This is live TV. We're going to kill it. Yeah, let's this do light's it. still going to be on, though. Okay. There you go. What? There's nothing happening. happening. No, yeah, congrats. Might be okay. You just look like shadow people right turn, now. Turn that. Get, cover that. What are you doing? There's, the there's nothing button. happening Isn't there. Isn't that cool? You yeah. can't see it. Oh, oh wait a second. No, you got to get close. Come on. Get, get, get over here. Just go. It is get, actually Go happening. get close. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's on now. All right. So, on. illuminated buttons. Focus, focus, focus. I'm focusing. Yeah. Just on the make it happen. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. All right. The Off? Internet. Oh, hey, look at and that. illuminated. Oh. Look at that. You can find your way out of a forest with that. No, you can't, Ron. <laughs> but you can really find how to change your memory card settings in a dark forest. Welcome to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> All right, turn on that light. All right. Done. Thank you, Gary. All right. So, um... Does it have a fingerprint sensor? No, <laughs> get real. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, Jordan, when Jordan gets uh, a few beers in him, he talks about nipples, and when Ron gets a few beers in him, he gets surly. Yeah, I do. I just get real. Um, wow. Okay, is there any talk about there being a log profile in the near Ooh, future for when... Mm. The, when the camera comes out. My guess is I know no. it's not going to be good, out Good job, one. Internet. It'll have yeah. Nikon flat, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, yeah. it has a flat uh, profile for sure. At this point, that's that's all the info I have. What's I flatter see. than flat? The flat is actually... I use um, Sony's picture profile. So There's Cine 2 profile yeah. all the time. Flat, I actually find it's nice because <laughs> yeah. it has a lot of dynamic range, but you don't have to be a master colorist to work with it. Sure. Because I'm not a master colorist, and you have to put up with my log grading every other video. So this is a great option. We still do want to see Nikon, though, keep up in this video. I'd world. love to see them embrace Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yes. I don't want to give them a pass on this. We're not box. giving a pass. Yeah, suggestion yeah. box. Yeah, there you go. But uh, I will say their flat profile It's hard to put suggestions in the suggestion box when it's already, like, overflowing with suggestions, and there's suggestion slips, like... Pushing out of the top of it, and you try to jam. I, I think we listened like, to a lot of them in this camera, to be honest with you. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> you really painted a picture there, Chris. I know. So I right? think everyone appreciated yeah, that. Yeah, you're very welcome, Internet. <laughs> Is the touchscreen as good as the iPhone? Probably. <laughs> the touch <laughs> the touch screen You're is actually welcome. really excellent. It, it um, is. I do. You know what I really appreciate about a touch screen in a lot of far simpler cameras than this is, you know, especially if you're learning or if you're just kind of flustered or whatever. Anytime you want to change something, I do like that. If you're getting, you know, a hard time finding the buttons, you can just touch the screen. And so actually having the menu work with the touch screen is a well, big benefit. Well, and it's worth pointing out too. Most cameras where they give you the option to run the menu through the touch screen, the touch screens aren't precise enough. So I'm yeah. constantly frustrated where this. I can tell you. This, I'm hitting exactly yeah, what I want every this single seems, time. This seems very good. It's almost like I'm using a Canon Rebel right now. Oh, Jesus. Uh, anyways. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. So, uh, Russ, uh, uh, an important question. Now, I had uh, someone earlier on asking whether what's going to happen with their former 70 by 200 and whether that's going to be able to resolve what's happening yeah. underneath the hood on that sensor and how it's going to kind of compensate for uh, 
pixel pitch and lenses, sure, and lenses yeah. are going to resolve 46 megapixels. So this is this is a great question. A little bit difficult to answer this specific one because yeah. we don't know which 70 to 200 they have. 70 by 200. Right? Like, uh, we'll, 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 not, we'll not um, call it the PF. You know, in, in, in past, uh, you know, when we brought out the D800E, we did have a list of recommended lenses, right? Um, I would assume that we're probably going to have something similar right. for this. I'm speculating a little bit. Um, it may be that same list plus the lenses that have been newer since that has come out. Um, but I mean, I would know, assume it's not unreasonable with it to have an older yeah. lens. This, this sensor is going to outperform. Yeah. yeah, I would assume that obviously the more modern lenses should be good. And who knows where <laughs> that cutoff yeah. is? But you know, Nikon knew that this camera was coming out, obviously, yeah. so you would try to prepare the resolution for that. But yeah, like when the five DSR came out, it did create a bit of a you know a hullabaloo, right? Because people were like, ah, oh, my lens doesn't work anymore. It's not recommended. I hope it's going to resolve. So yeah. and they'll still work. It's just obviously sure. you're not achieving the optimum results that you've spent a lot of money getting this fantastic <laughs> camera. <laughs> Russ just Russ so, just answered that that feeling right there. If yeah. you're one of those people who just grab a new camera camera, throw your lens on and shoot it wide open in every single shot because you paid for that one four aperture, just shoot this at 25 megapixels yeah. and you'll be totally fine. <laughs> well, again, you know, I mean, to its credit, this camera does support a lot of DX capability. I mean, it's got the 4K and DX mm -hmm. crop mode, got a lot of megapixels, so DX isn't going to be the worst thing on the planet and you'll still benefit from high D DR and, and well, light I find it really interesting. But, oh, sorry, but, but our current DX lens is going to resolve that pixel pitch. Um, okay, so real quick, uh, Jordan is fixated on nipples because of the play box, Playboy box in the corner. No. That's what it was. I'm glad um, we have got to the root of our this. Our boss is right here watching. Can we move okay, that? Okay, secondly, so secondly, no, that, that's actually become one of our hosts for the show. <laughs> um, Who wants okay. to do a live show, so, 45 second, minutes, where I just flip through 1965? Does anybody <laughs> want to do that? <laughs> Secondly, Russ, the internet uh, thinks that you are uh, in some way either Seth Rogen or related to. Uh, wow. <laughs> this is Dutch Rogen. I, I actually, Dutch Rogen. I actually do get the Seth Rogen thing a lot. I've been stopped on the plane. Okay. Can you so, laugh for us? No. Well, not on do. Like that. You gotta yeah. okay. on say demand. something funny first. Uh, <laughs> four, 45 megapixels. Holy cow, who is this for? Everyone, duh. Uh, <laughs> that's not so, true. No, that's not true. Ron's, Ron's just getting really surly now. No. Um, <laughs> no, obviously 46 megapixels is very excessive. Um, this camera isn't going to be for everybody, I don't think. I mean, we kind of should talk about it. I mean, who do you think this camera's for? Is this for tech heads? Is this for the high-end professional? I mean... Well, you know, I mean, it's a, it's honestly a really interesting question to ask because, you know, the one way, thing to look at is the resolution. And, yes, mm -hmm. it might be more resolution than a lot of people need. I think on 36 the, uh, is on, more resolution. On the other hand, keep in mind that you do have your three adjustable RAW sizes, right? right? And, and on the other hand, we've rounded the features out of this camera a lot more than, say, a D810 or D800, right? So sure. where we would have pigeonholed that camera more at a, a landscape photographer or maybe a wedding or an event photographer. I mean, there's no reason a sports photographer can't pick this up. Sure. This is the most video-oriented camera we've ever had. Yep. So, I mean, you know, for a premium full-frame DSLR, this has never been aimed at a wider audience than anything we have ever made to date. I loved you, and this is the end. Okay. <laughs> you were hilarious. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, get, get, okay. Not, I think not this waltz was your strongest you performance. Yeah, I mean, totally I mean, if we're talking about a dramatic role, but oh my god, this again made me laugh because of yeah. all the dirty jokes. But like. you made me cry. Okay, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Now, in, go in, Canada in, to to follow up. Go Flames to, to, fo to follow <laughs> up. Stop it. Uh, to follow up with the lens question, uh, it, it's just designed to be uh, a much more responsive animal with the newer E series optics. You know, that's a great question. That's honestly one I don't really have a specific answer for. Um, but I mean, the E-Series optics and this camera sort of represent sort of the current culmination of our technology for both lenses and bodies. Mm -hmm. So I would think that they're going to be pretty optimized to work together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the like brand in regard to the electronic right. aperture, like, yep. are we performing that much more readily uh, mm -hmm. in those kind of clutch situations? Okay, cool. I mean, it, um, you know, the electronic aperture does have some interesting benefits for video work, and so hopefully we'll absolutely. see that really kind of, you know, culminate. It'd be nice to see if Nikon really uh, makes that work together properly, maybe gives us, like, you know, stepless uh, exposure I, control. Yeah, I think the PF and then some of the inroads that they're making with this in terms of a little more video-centric features, mm -hmm. like figuring out that, you know, 4K full frame where they're using the entire sensor area. I think that it gives us an indication that they are moving in the direction of taking video yep. a little more seriously, which is great because that's what I really care about. Yeah. And again, you know, I mean, we, we, 
they're obviously going to be drawing allusions to the Canon 5D Mark IV, which is actually a very different camera, right? We're talking very different megapixel yep. count. But, you know, Canon tried to make that camera, uh, admittedly a very expensive camera, as cameras go, and yet trying to be a camera that's kind of uh, do anything you want The jack of all do. trades camera. Yeah, you know. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it looks like Nikon's just kind of really taking that way further. Way yeah. further, and the price point's not really any more. Well, um, one thing I love to see much. too is a lot of those things that they've been like, no, that's a consumer feature that are actually really insanely useful that a lot of Put maybe in. more arrogant camera companies would avoid, like a touch screen, a tilty screen, things like that. We're finding now on their you know model for everybody, essentially their flagship because the sports cameras are yeah, so niche right this now. This really does feel like a flagship camera in the truest mm -hmm. sense. Like this is Nikon flexing its muscles, and that's what actually S. I don't think flagship should be determined by right price now. point. This is currently like the culmination of yeah. the best of what they have to offer right yeah. now, mm -hmm. especially at low ISO. Possibly, <laughs> yeah. Possibly, we're gonna test. Possibly. Uh, all right. Do, do, do. Lots of people bantering back and forth. Mm. Good job, guys. Which is um, great. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, see. banter, but that doesn't help us much, guys. Come <laughs> no, on. it doesn't. <laughs> I got what two cameras changes, pointed what at me. we have on here that are really worth noting? Um, uh, oh, we were talking earlier. It is nice. Um, you've got the viewfinder will actually gray out for doing different aspect ratio shooting. Oh, yeah, it, put, it, puts, it puts a borderline around. Yes, it has. I, I kind of square. mentioned that when you sent the Instagram comment. It has one to one now. So here's the interesting question. I mean, we talked about this earlier. Yeah, it's got square one to one, which I love. It's still going to be huge megapixels, like over 30 is my guess. Um, but yeah, it grays out the corners, all it, the sides. It, it puts a black frame that you see yeah. in the viewfinder. So it doesn't really gray it out. You can still see what's around it, which is useful. Which is great, yeah. Right? If you're panning or, or you have a moving subject or something. Very cool. But it's, it, your crop is clearly marked out in the viewfinder. So, okay, here's a question then. Does it have other aspect ratios or is it just it, the square? It, no, it absolutely does. Yeah, oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it actually has five aspect ratios. So and it will appropriately yes. yeah. darken yeah. the The only one you don't see is the full frame because you don't need a line to mark it out because that's your refund. That's quite smart. Actually. I want something yeah. obscure. Is there a 5 by 7 aspect ratio? No. Close okay. Up, <laughs> close up for it. Come on. Uh, <laughs> but 16 by 9, I would assume 1 to 1, 3, 4, 2, 3, and maybe like an ultra panoramic or what would be uh, No. So it's, it's got, I'm, uh, I'm going from memory here. We have the, we have the DX, the full frame. Uh, oh, have, DX. Right? Yeah, okay. We have yeah. the 1 to 1. Uh, and then, uh, four, three, four, three yeah, and, and 16, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We Very did cool. it. Very cool. Very cool. So, uh, and I like that. I mean, shooting square, I love that square format. Um, you don't have to use it. You can be like, eh, I'm not going to do that. I can do that in post. Well, and you'll anything. still have your full three, two raw file. Sure. It's just great if you want to compose. Cause yeah. I love composing Beautiful. in boxy or ultra wide. Those are yeah. usually my two favorite aspect ratios. Yeah. Cool. Uh, cool. And square format is not for Instagram, by the way. It's obviously for IKEA frames. All right. <laughs> Noted. N Noted. Uh, Thanks, Sweden. There's no point making a camera this high unless you're going to print it. Okay, so people screaming different cameras at one another. Hey, any famous people uh, saying uh, things there, Ron? Well, no, but we got a lot of people asking for a tentative date. Or, oh, a yeah, fix, good question. or a fixed set so, in stone time that they can throw uh, money at Nikon. Yeah. Yeah. No, no fixed set uh, time yet. Uh, September is what it's looking like. We don't have a specific date yet. Sometimes uh, September. Sometimes September, 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 September yeah. yes. Yeah. So, and I mean, it's the 23rd, 24th, depending on what part of the world you're in. Don't do it. it. It's not far don't away. Don't confirm no, it like that. I mean, that. frankly, let's just say it's not going to be long. It's yeah, not going to be long. It's pretty cool. Sometimes yeah. September, not long. Yeah. They didn't say September so again, next year. Pre-order now, great yep. time to do it. You know, get your name in because frankly, we're expecting that a lot of people are gonna be interested in this. Yeah. There's gonna be a deluge of orders yeah. on these, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, the sensor is from somebody else, possibly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> a lot of qualifiers there, Ron, good job. <laughs> is, is there a recording limit on the video? Uh, yes. Yeah, it'll, it'll be 29.59, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so classic recording limit. Until yeah. you people are willing to pay those European taxes, we're going to keep dealing with this stuff. You hey, <laughs> <laughs> shots fired. Jordan gets a little bit of drinks in him. He becomes un PC. Um, pricing in North America, yeah. US but, and Canada. Uh, here's a question Dot MOV, Canadian. Uh, H.264 compression? Do we know what kind of compression we're getting on this thing? H.264. H264. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had that question too. Thanks. Yeah. You're like uh, a psychic. Pr pricing was forty two ninety nine Canadian. I don't have Canadian. American. That's eight hundred dollars USD. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think I know, right? for yeah, the most part, we weeded through all your questions, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much.
Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for oh, tuning uh, in. Russ, oh, are we going to see anything in the future as far as a full frame mirrorless? We'll talk, you okay. totally don't need to answer that. Ha-ha. Uh, Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. What are we doing for time? Yeah, we're good. We're time. Uh, oh, yeah, we're done. Well, we have other things to talk about, though. Before or, we go, yeah. uh, so, yes, first off, thank you so much. For, uh, Thanks for having me. Coming in. This has been fun, and this is exciting. G so. Going through this barrage of questions for all that, you. I yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this and got your questions out. Um, we will have a full field test coming, but yes. in the interim, uh, definitely hit us up on social media, Twitter, Instagram, yeah. if you have any and questions. Again, any questions later on, we can answer those too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to point out we will not have a live show this Saturday because Chris and I will be at the MEC event. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be at the MEC event. So for people that don't know, MEC event, uh, MEC is Mountain Equipment Co-op. It's a big store here in Canada doing a lot of outdoor gear and stuff like that. So if you're in the Calgary area, come see us. Uh, Bonus Park, yep. I believe it is. August 26th next Saturday and it's 11 to 7 so it's the whole day so very cool event um MEC is an outdoor company as I said so they're talking about like you know they got camping gear outdoor wear all that kind of stuff but they also have uh slack lining paddle boards cycling like all this kind of stuff and so if you come down to bonus park totally free just drop in 11 to 7 August 26th and you guys can try out these events. You so go. if you want to know what paddleboarding feels like, it basically feels like standing on a, a paddleboard in the water uh, and trying to not fall in. <laughs> Don't but, ruin it. No, no, it's them. super exciting. They're, they're I'm not it. coming now. Yeah, they're loving it. They're loving it. But you can also, if you're more for, photographically orientated, uh, come down. Uh, Canon is going to be there with their gear, and you can certainly try out all the latest Canon gear. It's going to be cool. It's an awesome event, and you can shoot these events. Disclaimer: the D850 won't be there. It won't D850 be there. Won't be there. <laughs> that is an but Chris and I will be if you're wondering yes. where we're at uh and then we will be back with a uh, live show a week and a half from now so mm -hmm. we'll talk to you guys then but thank you so much for tuning in thank Thanks. you again the opportunity nice to, to play you. with this has been yeah. fantastic very, very cool uh very we cool. really appreciate it and we will see you guys all again very soon look at it thank it's you beautiful guys. It's exciting. Exciting. last audience. great yeah. dslr i do yeah. think this is gonna be quite an exciting product on the market all right good night guys night or good day. bedtime Whatever. bedtime my beer's done how's your beer <laughs> yeah i know your beer.